I don't think there will be a technology that's a winner because the chemistry of batteries is not fixed. There's not a winner on the battery side. It's dramatic amounts of R&D going into the battery manufacturing side. And as that keeps improving, the recycling industry has to keep improving with it. And that's why these have to be dynamic facilities. I mean, as far as who's actually going to be the winner, I think it really comes back to this closed loop economy and the fact that these elements are never consumed if they're handled correctly. So what I really see happening is these types of you know, partnerships or alliances or consortia between companies in each of those different groups of the circular economy. If you have a battery recycler and a primary metal extraction company with a cathode company and other metal refiners and a cell company and a vehicle company working together, you can essentially own that material indefinitely. You can own that supply chain. You can really work to be independent from the rest of the market. You can have almost indefinite security of supply by having access to those materials going forward. So I think it's those alliances being formed and whoever can form the best partnerships to really make that happen at the commercial scale. And then even beyond just the products and market, you have your R&D divisions between the recyclers, the cathode companies, the cell manufacturers, you know, working together on the next generation of material of what's up the pipeline. So you're not just waiting to see what happens to get to market. So I, I really see that as the key to going forward is locking down those relationships.